Hello and welcome to a special episode of Ranked where I'm setting out to share my ranking of all 60 movies in the Walt Disney Animation Studios canon. I recently completed a series where I ranked all the movies within their ages or eras, and I wanted to do that before trying to rank the movies all together because it's pretty daunting to try to put 60 films in order. The era rankings helped break it down and made it a lot more manageable to do this, but it was still extremely difficult. There are parts of this list that I'm very confident in, and other parts still have me wondering if I made the right placements, but I just had to do my best and lock it in. Rankings are sort of fluid and ever-shifting based on our evolving tastes and experiences, so this video simply contains my current preferences. Things can always change. I know that some of my placements will raise eyebrows and possibly incite anger in some of you, but I really want to make sure I communicate that this is a ranking based purely on my personal enjoyment of these movies. It's a least to most favorite list, not a worst to best list. So try to remember that if a movie you love or think is amazing shows up closer to the bottom. I'm not an authority on these movies and it doesn't really mean anything in the big picture. This is just my own biased ranking. It can be really interesting to disagree though, so I encourage you to comment if you have your own thoughts to share. Let's just remember to keep it lighthearted and fun. To avoid this video being 5 hours long, I'm only going to be sharing a few quick thoughts for each movie as I reveal my list. If you want to hear a more in-depth version of my thoughts on these movies, you can go to my Era's Ranked playlist and check out those videos. I'll link the playlist on screen as well as in the description down below. Now without further ado, it is my great honor to share with you my personal ranking of all 60 films in Walt Disney's animated canon. Let's get into it. I didn't have to think too long about what my least favorite movie in the canon is. There's a decent theme about leadership, but the plot is an absolute drag, and the visuals are largely barren, as are the characters' personalities. James Newton Howard's score is easily the best element at play in Dinosaur. It was an innovative movie, but it's aged poorly. In my mind, Dinosaur is just one big brown stain. This is one of the worst plots I can think of in any Disney movie. It's a string of random events and lessons that all build to a completely unrelated climax. None of the music stands out to me and the animation is quite scratchy. There are a few nice backgrounds and the characters have some personality, but this feels like a chore to watch. Justice for Girl Squirrel. It pains me to have this so low because I love cats, but I fear this is where it belongs. It has some of the worst quality animation of any movie in the canon, and it's hard not to doze off while watching this. Duchess and O'Malley are good characters and Everybody Wants to Be a Cat is an iconic song, but outside of that there's not much for me to praise. It's as if Lady and the Tramp and 101 Dalmatians had a love child, but all the personality was sucked out of it. This package project is more propaganda than movie, but it's part of the canon so I'll judge it accordingly. Donald's familiar face and some gorgeous animation help, but they can't save it. The inclusion of live action footage here is a big minus, and things get very obnoxious and repetitive. There's some unintentional humor that prevents this from being a total snooze fest, but this movie feels like an intruder in the canon. Horny Donald is really something. This is probably the weirdest movie in the whole canon. Two completely unrelated shorts split the runtime and are connected by the most bizarre premise. A birthday party for an 8 year old girl where the only two guests are Edgar Bergen and two ventriloquist dummies. Count me in. The bongo and beanstalk shorts are fine, but I have trouble getting fully invested in them. 
Fun and Fancy Free is ranking so low mostly because it's a blatant attempt at making half-formed projects and leftovers into a feature-length film. I'm not a fan of the Fantasia format in the first place, so I did not feel the need to revisit this concept. I like that it's shorter than the original, but that's not a compliment. There are certainly some nice visuals, but most of the animation and shorts pale in comparison to the first Fantasia. I like the flying whales and the flamingos, but the Sorcerer's Apprentice repeat was completely unnecessary. Overall, this entry just leaves me confused about its existence. Fantasia is a visual masterpiece. Unfortunately, it's also mind-numbingly boring. I respect the hell out of the ambition and the talent that went into making this, but I won't pretend like I'd ever sit down to watch this outside of a full canon watch through. I enjoy the Sorcerer's Apprentice and Night on Bald Mountain segments, and I really can't praise the sheer quality of the animation enough. But if I'm watching Fantasia, I'm most likely fighting for my life trying to stay awake. The Rescuers has a unique premise, but for some reason it still just bores me. There's a decent amount going on, yet it feels like nothing is happening. I think the overall gloomy and depressing vibe is what turns me off. Bernard and Bianca are good co-leads, but they don't overcome my distaste for the scratchy animation and melancholy music. This package film has a variety of segments ranging from boring to decent. The Peter and the Wolf short is the most notable, but my favorite has to be Johnny Fedora and Alice Bluebonnet because it's so quaint and lovely. I appreciate that the shorts are connected through the theme of music and the animation is pretty strong, but I will rarely ever watch this movie. Oliver Twist in New York with dogs wasn't something we really needed. The plot is okay but doesn't keep me that engaged, and this movie has some of the ugliest background animation of any Disney movie, but at least the character designs are pretty strong. The music is decent as well, but it doesn't feel like the charming Disney soundtracks from the past. Oliver and Company feels a bit brighter than some of my other least favorites, so it has that edge, but overall I really don't care for this one. I think The Black Cauldron is overhated, but it's still not an amazing movie or anything. It has some stellar backgrounds and interesting CGI, so it fares well in the animation department, but the plot can be weak and gets boring at times. I personally sort of enjoy the darker elements at play here, but I understand why they didn't really work for a Disney movie. The Horned King is such a scary villain, and he's probably my favorite part of watching this. My only explanation for this is that even though Chicken Little is a bad movie with gimmicky humor and rough computer animation, it's quite entertaining. It's a struggle trying to place it because there are much better quality films in the canon, but they can be so boring and I'd honestly rather watch Chicken Little. I don't care for the soundtrack or the alien plot, but the wacky humor can be oddly endearing, and if you don't take it too seriously, this movie can be an alright time. I always think I'm going to like this movie until I actually sit down and watch it. It's not bad, but it just gets kind of boring, which is often my biggest complaint when it comes to these movies. I like The Wind in the Willows overall more than The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, but the headless horseman scene at the end of Sleepy Hollow is the standout moment. There's some good music and great animation throughout, and even though I'm not the biggest fan of this, it feels very classic and I'm glad it's part of the canon.
My opinion on this movie changes all the time. I wish I could see it with nicer animation, but the unpolished look is also part of its personality. The premise is solid, but some scenes overstay their welcome and cause the film to sag. Robin Hood is an extremely strong protagonist, and I like some of the songs, but this is not a favorite of mine. Lady Cluck, I must say, is flawless. While I think this is a vast improvement over the original, especially in terms of animation, I'm still not huge on it. I love the Australian Outback setting, but Bernard and Bianca feel a little shoehorned in here. Jake and Joanna are fun new characters, and I like the anti-poaching themes, but this movie feels quite out of place in the canon. Brother Bear has some important and interesting themes that get completely bulldozed by a rushed and unrealistic emotional climax. I like what the movie was aiming for, but the approach ended up being too idealistic, even for a Disney movie. The characters are decent, and Phil Collins penned some solid new songs for the project, but none of it blows me away. Aside from the animation, Brother Bear's stunning displays of nature are some of the canon's best. Walt Disney Animation's second attempt at a fully computer animated movie was certainly an improvement over their first try, but I still don't care for it much. This movie contains bright and appealing visuals as well as an effective arc for Lewis, but the volume of characters and time travel sort of loses me. The music is serviceable and the villain twist was creative, but this is far from my favorite. I'm always a proponent for traditional animation, but sort of like with the rescuers down under, revisiting Winnie the Pooh felt unnecessary. On the positive side, I like that they improved the animation while maintaining and honoring the original style, and the plot is amusing. There are also some cute new songs, but this movie just doesn't do it for me. It's harmless, but not compelling. I don't care if you think this is too high. Home on the Range is hated on way too much. Is it amazing? Of course not. But it has some great elements like Alan Menken's fun western score and the stellar background animation. The plot isn't too special, but it's cute and above all, watchable. There are some annoying characters and the villain is lame, but on the whole, this movie is totally fine. I know this is low for The Jungle Book, but I don't have any childhood nostalgia for it, and the plot can seem episodic. The characters are memorable and the songs by the Sherman Brothers are classics, but they aren't personal favorites. And while I understand the ending of the movie, I still think it's nasty. On the plus side, I think the score is flawless and some of the background animation is stunning. Dumbo is a certified Disney classic, but that doesn't mean that I love it. Between the depressing and problematic elements, the vibes aren't great, and I'm not in love with any of the characters. I also think Dumbo is the least impressive Golden Age movie in terms of animation. The standout is the music. Casey Jr. and Baby Mine are wonderful songs. It's always satisfying to see an underdog come out on top, but Dumbo isn't something I revisit all too often. This is about as conflicted as I'll get, because I don't think this movie is bad at all, but it feels like it was designed to emotionally torture me. No other Disney movie brings me such negative feelings, and for that reason I tend to avoid watching this. But I love Todd, the animation, the setting, and the score. I know the themes are meant to be difficult, but I don't see why I would voluntarily put myself through this experience.
This is technically a package film, but since it's all about Winnie the Pooh, it feels a lot more cohesive than other movies of this format. The animation is scratchy, but it's not a huge deal here. The collection of songs is just wonderful, and the characters are iconic and lovable. My main thought about this movie is that it's endearing. It's not trying to be much more than a sweet little escape to the Hundred Acre Wood, and I sort of love it for that. This is purely here because of its 42 minute runtime, which should totally be a flaw, cause that's really not long enough to be a real movie, but if it means I don't have to pay attention for as long, I'm all for it. The shorts honestly aren't even bad in this, but I'm not into the dated live action footage whatsoever. The segment about Pedro the Plane is my favorite part, and there's some very nice animation included here, but Saludos Amigos really has no business being in the canon. Melody Time is easily my favorite of the package films. This movie has some exquisite animation, most notably in the Once Upon a Winter Time sequence, and The Legend of Johnny Appleseed is gorgeous as well. I also enjoy the Little Toot and Pecos Bill shorts. The biggest knock on the movie is that it still includes some live action footage, and I wish we didn't revisit the Three Caballeros, but overall, it's a pretty pleasant collection of shorts. I don't have anything bad to say about The Great Mouse Detective, it just doesn't click with me very strongly. The plot is well paced, there's good emotional conflict, and a fun yet threatening villain who even gets his own song. The whole robot queen thing is pretty out there, but it's entertaining so I can't complain. This movie has solid animation, good lead characters, and one of the coolest settings for a climax in the whole canon. For all of this movie's faults, I'd still rather watch it than everything that's ranked beneath it simply because it's entertaining. Remember, it's not a worst to best list. Ralph Breaks the Internet includes tons of cheap gags and corporate representation that I really dislike, but it's also incredibly creative and I have so much fun with the princess scenes. While I have issues with the third act of the movie, I still appreciate the theme about healthy friendship. I wish Ralph and Vanellope got a better sequel, but at least this one is fun. This movie has a unique plot that is mostly engaging, but it does have its duller moments. The standout is easily Cruella de Vil, whose design and voice work are immaculate. I appreciate the animation style and monochromatic backgrounds, even though I wish it was more polished. Sergeant Tibbs is one of my favorite underrated Disney characters, and the music in the film is good. K9 Crunchies for life. Lilo and Stitch is one of the most original stories Disney has ever conceived, and for that alone it deserves props. I'm personally not that into Stitch as a character or the alien elements here, but the plot surrounding Nani and Lilo's strained relationship in the midst of tragically losing their parents is highly compelling. There's some fun original music and the Hawaiian setting is great. I usually don't love when Disney uses watercolor animation for their backgrounds, but it works for the lush tropical setting in this case. Although it's still not a favorite, this one has grown on me a bit. Transforming Treasure Island into a space story makes it modern and fresh, and Jim Hawkins is a strong lead with a powerful emotional arc. I find his relationship with Silver to be undercooked, but it's still impactful and extremely important to the movie overall. James Newton Howard composed a stellar score for the movie. Some of the CGI here doesn't mix super well with the traditional animation, but the space settings are really appealing. It feels more DreamWorks than Disney, but this one isn't bad.
I wanted to love this movie so much more, but I still see a lot of positives in it. Even though I have issues with the plot, I'm glad that it's original, and the cast of characters have good chemistry together. Sisu's design is pretty stupid, but the animation of the settings is beautiful, as is the score. The themes of trust and unification are depicted with too much rose-colored idealism for me, but it's still a great message and the movie leaves me with a hopeful feeling. The Emperor's New Groove is one of the freshest and funniest movies in the canon. Yzma and Kronk are the highlight of the movie, but the whole thing is entertaining. Cusco and Pacha foil each other perfectly, and even though Cusco's arc is cookie cutter, it's effective. There's excellent animation and character designs here too. This is another movie that I don't have any complaints about, but it's just not a favorite. Atlantis has some of my favorite set design and atmospheric world building in the canon. The plot and mythos get a little flimsy, but due to the strength of Milo and Keita's passion for Atlantis, I find myself invested. The score is fantastic and I like the crew, but I wish they were more fleshed out. I think this is a solid adventure with some exciting twists, but you won't find me going out of my way to rewatch this one often. I'd say from here on out, I really like all of these movies. Big Hero 6 is an engaging superhero story centered on themes of revenge and grief, and it all works thanks to Baymax. He's absolutely delightful, and he's the heart of the movie as he represents Hero's connection with Tadashi. The main group here is good, but the villain is one of the lamest in recent memory. San Francisco is a terrific setting, and I think the score matches the film's vibe perfectly. I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking that the most notable thing about Tarzan is Phil Collins' soundtrack. Hearing his songs in the movie is definitely my favorite part about watching it. Tarzan and Jane are a likeable couple, but Clayton is far from the best villain. This movie has wonderful animation and touching themes. There are just other movies I'd prefer to watch before this. Encanto is a special movie with vibrant animation and so much personality, especially from its music. Jermaine Franco's score is enchanting, and Lin-Manuel Miranda's original songs are so infectious. Mirabelle is a relatable protagonist, and I really like what this movie has to say about our value as individuals, even if I'm not always enthralled with the plot. I am a Bolt advocate, that's for sure. I wouldn't say that it's an incredible movie, but it has a really fun premise that's rich with entertainment and character growth. Bolt is one of those movies that makes me appreciate the beauty of the simple things in life, and I love a good cross-country road trip. The animation largely holds up to this day, and the climax is surprisingly touching. I like the music and the characters, and I think this one deserves more attention. When Tiana is a human in the magnificent city of New Orleans? Love it. When Tiana is a frog out on the bayou? Don't love it. I'm so thankful that Disney returned to traditional animation, and the music by Randy Newman is spectacular, but I can't say I love this movie because of those dang frogs. Tiana is a great protagonist, and a black lead was long overdue for a Disney movie, so despite my complaints, I'm really happy this movie exists on the whole. Weirdly enough, I think this movie gets worse once the characters get to Neverland. It's still good, but the plot isn't the strongest, lots of the characters are annoying, and it gets problematic. Despite all that, I still really like the movie for its music, animation, and themes about growing up. The second star to the right and You Can Fly are perfect songs. 
I'm not the biggest Captain Hook fan, but he's still a great villain with an immaculate design. And bitchy Tinkerbell is the GOAT. Peter Pan is a timeless adventure, and it's deservedly one of Disney's ultimate classics. Watching Alice in Wonderland can feel quite episodic, sort of like The Jungle Book, but Wonderland and its inhabitants are appealing enough to me that it isn't a big issue. There's whimsical music and colorful, exquisite animation. I get a kick out of how fed up Alice gets with the nonsense she encounters. At the end, you feel like you had a wild, trippy ride, but are ultimately glad to return to the real world. And I guess that's the whole point. Bambi often surprises me because I think that I would rank it much lower, but there's so much I love about it. It can be slow, but in a way that feels explorative and natural rather than boring. The animation is just marvelous, and it helps to cultivate such serene and encompassing atmospheres. The presence of man is always lurking around the edges, and I think it's so cool how effective a villain we never even see is. The music is also lovely, and the forest fire climax is one of my favorite scenes in the entirety of the canon. The Hunchback is unique for its shockingly mature themes and subject matter. It mostly stems from the film's villain, Frollo, who is extremely evil but fantastic to watch. His song, Hellfire, is a standout moment, and I really enjoy all the songs with the exception of A Guy Like You. The gargoyles taint the serious mood of this movie, but not enough for me to stop enjoying it. I really like Quasimodo, Esmeralda, and Phoebus as leads, and there is a lot of impressive animation work going on, particularly in the architecture. Alan Menken's score here is grand. Wreck-It Ralph is a showcase of modern originality and creativity. The arcade setting and the plot are both terrific, and the bond between Ralph and Vanellope propels the story and grounds it emotionally. I think the computer animation really shines here, and the glimmering score is a perfect accompaniment to the film. I'm not huge on the twist villain, but it still works, and Felix and Calhoun are highly amusing side characters. Thematically, this hits the nail on the head. This is one of my unpopular opinions, but just because I'm not in love with Beauty and the Beast doesn't mean I don't still think it's great. I can see why this is considered to be one of Disney's masterpieces, because the story is touching, the characters are strong, and the animation and music are both tremendous. It just doesn't resonate with me as much as some of the others, and that's okay. This list is based on personal enjoyment. This movie has an important theme about inner beauty, and I think it has one of Alan Menken's best scores. Back-to-back -back controversial rankings. Obviously, Pocahontas has some accuracy issues and problematic elements, and the plot isn't even that strong, but I genuinely think that the music and the animation is some of Disney's best, and those elements are strong enough for me to rank it here. Alan Menken's score is glorious, and the heights it reaches at the ending always gives me chills. Colors of the Wind is one of the best Disney songs in my opinion, and I think the movie's visuals can just speak for themselves. Pinocchio has a bizarre plot and can get rather dark at times, but it also has so much magic and charm, and my nostalgia for it is powerful. Jiminy can grate on my nerves, but he's so vital to the movie I can look past it. The animation is mind-bogglingly good and holds up so well. Figaro is one of my favorite Disney characters, so I always love seeing him when I watch this. When You Wish Upon a Star is the most iconic Disney song, and I think it's one of the best.
I love Frozen, but I don't think it's without flaws. I wish the characters were more fleshed out and the plot can sag, but Elsa's emotional conflict is fascinating and relatable, and the songs are brilliant, barring Fixer Upper. Let It Go might have been overexposed, but that doesn't mean it's not an incredible song. The focus on sisterly love is a breath of fresh air. I also think that the animation of the ice and snow is out of this world, and it's such a treat to take in. I can understand the issues people have with the plot in this movie, but the emotions explored through Anna and Elsa's journeys really affected me, and that's why I'm not bothered by some of the flaws. Not to mention, the animation is exquisite. I also adore the soundtrack for Frozen 2. It's one of the most consistently appealing collections of songs to me in any Disney movie. Into the Unknown, Show Yourself, Lost in the Woods, and The Next Right Thing are all outstanding. Frozen didn't need a sequel, but I'm happy that we got one. If it weren't for the heavy focus on the mice and Lucifer in this movie, I'd say it's almost perfect. Cinderella is a delightful person, and Lady Tremaine is a stupendous villain. I can be a broken record when I praise Disney animation, but Cinderella is truly remarkable, and it contains my favorite shot in the whole canon. The music is so good as well, so This Is Love is one of my favorite Disney songs. Cinderella is a movie with a surprising amount of humor, and just like Dumbo, it's satisfying to see an underdog prevail. Creative world building and a clever, socially relevant metaphor are what makes Utopia stand out, but even without those things, it's still a fun and engaging mystery plot. It's also one of the cases where I think the twist villain actually works quite well. Nick and Judy are fabulous leads, and their connection is well developed. I love the themes about self-reflection, breaking down our prejudices, and trying to make the world a better place. This movie is the word lovely personified. It's one of the most impressive and charming Disney movies in terms of animation, and it's fun to be put in the dog's perspective. There's not a ton going on with the plot, but I don't mind at all. It's a delight to simply exist in this world. Lady is one of my favorite character designs in the whole canon, and there's wonderful music throughout the film. The Bella Notte scene is an all-time great. Mulan is one of the most high-stakes, grand-scale movies in the canon, and I love it. Mulan is a deeply relatable protagonist, and I so admire her bravery and determination. There's a great mix of comedy, excitement, and impactful emotion here, and it all comes to life through striking animation. Jerry Goldsmith's score is probably the most epic yet gorgeous of any Disney movie, and the songs are winners as well. Reflection is my favorite, but the infectious nature of I'll Make a Man Out of You cannot be denied. Hercules gets some flack for being a hot mess, but the gospel narrated story of reimagined Greek mythology works for me. Megara is one of my all-time favorite Disney characters, and her relationship with Hercules is so sweet. I love the complex emotional struggles she goes through, and her song is a banger. As a villain, Hades is a great mix of threatening and comical. The majority of Hercules is an entertaining, endearingly corny experience, but there are also key emotional moments that leave an impact, and I'm happy to be along for the ride. I can say with confidence that Sleeping Beauty is the single most gorgeously animated film in the canon. 
It could rank high based on its stunning visuals alone, but I also love the beautifully eerie score and of course, the incredible villain that is Maleficent. I'll admit that the pacing is off in this movie, but it hardly bothers me. The fairies are so enjoyable to watch, and Once Upon a Dream is a legendary track. This movie is the pinnacle of classic Disney animation to me. To many people's shock and disappointment, this isn't ranking first, but I absolutely love The Lion King. The characters are phenomenal, especially my favorite Disney villain, Scar. The stakes are so high, and the emotional themes about learning from your past and taking responsibility are communicated perfectly. All the musical numbers in this movie are iconic, and none more than the film's opener and closer, Circle of Life. My favorite song is actually Be Prepared though. The animation is top tier, and Hans Zimmer's score is one of the best of all time, not just within the Disney category. Snow White is a trailblazer of a film, and it set the standard for Disney going forward. The Evil Queen is the best part of this movie, but I have a blast making fun of Snow White while I watch this. There is a lot of singing and some nonsense, but it never really bores me. The animation is astonishing for its time, and it still looks great to this day. The music is classic and timeless, and it's almost devastatingly nostalgic to me. I wouldn't claim that Snow White is perfect, but I'd still call it a masterpiece. Sometimes you do get it right on your first try. Aladdin combines all the Disney elements near flawlessly. It might have the best plot in the entire canon, and the visuals are stunning, especially the settings. Every character is strong and memorable, but a special shout out goes to Robin Williams' genie. You can't separate him from this movie. We have yet another outstanding score from Alan Menken, and there isn't a song on this soundtrack that I don't like. Arabian Nights and A Whole New World are my top picks, and the latter is possibly the best sequence in the film. Aladdin has a wonderful theme about the value of honesty and being yourself, and I enjoy it every time. Tangled is a ridiculously appealing movie. The somewhat modernized take on Rapunzel could not have been executed better. I think the conflict with Mother Gothel is layered and fascinating, and Rapunzel's relationship with Flynn is my favorite in the canon. The animation is delicious, and watching Rapunzel break free and experience things for the first time makes me appreciate life. Rapunzel's realization in the climax is a bit weak, but aside from that I have no complaints. The soundtrack is marvelous and the highlight is I See the Light. The floating lantern sequence is cemented as one of the most magical Disney moments ever. The animation of the ocean is a massive reason why this movie is so high. It's captivatingly stunning and I can't praise it enough. But looking beyond that, I find Moana's journey of self-actualization to be extremely inspiring. The I Am Moana sequence is just thrilling. I'm in love with the whole soundtrack, aside from maybe shiny, and the score is atmospheric and grand. Moana's relationship with Maui really works, and I find this movie to be rewarding in all aspects. If you saw my renaissance ranking, you already knew this was coming. The Little Mermaid displays animation that is remarkable and character designs that are legendary. Ariel gets criticized sometimes, but I view her as a passionate and brave character who takes risks and fights for what she wants. Her journey can be a metaphor for so many things, and I find that both relatable and comforting. 
Ursula is a marvelous, charismatic villain as well. Alan Menken composed one of my favorite scores of all time for this movie, and along with Howard Ashman, they crafted a soundtrack with exquisite songs like Under the Sea and my all-time favorite, Part of Your World. Ariel's connection with Eric is earnest and sweet, and the growth that King Triton goes through really makes this movie hit emotionally. The side characters are so memorable and important to the story as well. The Little Mermaid is everything to me, and it was a triumphant return to form that saved Disney animation. And that concludes this ranking of all 60 movies from Walt Disney Animation Studios. I hope you enjoyed my list, and whether you agree or disagree, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Feel free to post your own rankings, your top 10, or even just your favorite movie from the canon. I'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting like or subscribe, and if you want to see more rankings, trivia, or video essays, head over to the Trove to check out videos like that. I'll also have playlists linked in the description down below. Thank you so much for joining and taking the time to watch my video, and expect more rankings like this coming soon. See you next time.